Now, one of the uh, questions is likely to be an isomer one. Remember, there are two types of isomers, a structural isomer, which means it's got the same molecular formula, but the structure is drawn differently. And the second, which is a geometric isomer. A geometric isomer would, in fact, have the same name, except for the fact that the geometrical ar arrangement of some of the groups means that we have some of the groups being in the up or down position, and they're in this position because the double bond in the middle does not allow free rotation. Now in this case, we've got chlorine down here and a chlorine down here. They're the same groups. We're looking for the same groups. We're identifying are they in the down or up position. Now, these both are in the down position, and that means that they must be cis. If this Cl had been up there, it would have been a trans if that had swapped around. Okay, but um, the question is in fact asking us to draw the other geometrical isomer and give it a name. So in this case we just need to in fact almost redraw this. We can just put a CH3 there, CL there, and we'll put the CH2 CH3 on this side and the CL here. So as you can see, I'm just going to draw some circles around it. The two chlorines are now, one is up and one is down, and that makes this a trans. Now, in naming this, one of the common things is for students not to actually look at how many carbons we have in a row. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Now, we could actually number it the other way, going from this end but that would give us the double bond on the higher number of carbons. So we must number it from up here, and that means that we have, in fact, got the lowest number for the double bond, which is 2. So this is going to be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pent 2 with two chlorines. And the chlorines are going to be on the 2 and 3. So 2, 3, dichloro, pent to in. Now this is the same name as the um, isomer molecule A, so we have to actually change its name to show that it is a trans, whereas the one at the top would of course be a cis. Okay, um, this question has become a fairly standard one um, that comes up quite often, and it wants you to understand the difference between structural isomers and geometrical isomers. This molecule here is obviously not a geometrical isomer because we've got chlorine here and a chlorine here. And if we were to swap these back and forth, obviously it wouldn't change anything with the molecule. So this that cannot exist as a geometrical isomer. However, the fact that it has the same number of atoms and the same types of atoms, but they're just arranged structurally different, different, means that this is a structural isomer. So, in answering this question about why is it a structural isomer, it's probably best to give the definition of what a structural isomer is. It, of course, is a structural isomer, has the same molecular formula, but a different structural arrangement. Molecule C is structurally different. And I'd actually name it, and its name is And we've got two chlorines, but they're on the first carbon here, so it's 1, 1, dichloro, and double bonds here as well, so 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we've got a side group here on that one. Dichloro, 1, 2, 3, methyl, can't fit it in there, but 3, methyl, bute, one in, 
and is therefore a structural isomer. And I might just put in brackets something like the same number, the same molecular formula, just to reinforce that. Okay, um, the next question. Uh, geometrical isomers, why is it that A and B can exist in them but C cannot? Now, a geometrical isomer requires that you have the groups being different on either side of the double bond, not on the same side. So, a geometrical isomer requires that you have, and you should refer to the example, of course. That in there side, e.g., chlorine on either side of double bond in A and B. It cannot be on the same side as in the case of C because. as this does not change the geometry. When swapped. Kind of struggling to get that in there, but okay. So that's the main reason. You do need to have a double bond of course and but you do also need to have different groups on either side. They cannot be on the same side. Now, in this question, we're being asked to do a comparison with the different products that form it in reaction with bromine. Now, similarities, of course, would be that they all do addition reactions, but uh, let's just draw out the products here. Obviously, the double bond disappears. So if we put a bromine in, and we have that go down to a Cl, come along to a CH3 and Cl and CH2 CH3 it's the first product and if we do a similar thing here we're going to get bromine bromine and we're going to have a Cl coming off Cl coming off so Now the first thing you'll start to notice about this, of course, is that the products here are actually pretty much exactly the same for the first two, which are the geometrical isomers, and that's of course because they really are structurally the same. It's just the rotation around the double bond that changes. If you add across a double bond and there's no more rotation, then you're going to get the same product on the other side. Now if we have two cells here and then we have also a BR doesn't matter where I put the BR around there of course let's put a BR here and we're going to have a CH3 a CH2 CH3 then this is going to be a different product altogether so similarities is that they all do di addition reactions so and that's because of the presence now I'd write this out in full on an exam so the addition would be uh, due to a double bond and the observation would be the same orange to colorless due to the bromine adding across the double bond the products uh, the differences, of course, would be, these reactions would be fast in both cases, the difference is that you'd get a different product. Now the two geometrical isomers would um, C 
same product and the uh, normal structuralisman down here, this one, that would have a different product. Okay.